attention, please. Uh, if I can have everybody's attention, uh, we're going to get ready to get the proceedings started here. Uh, John Sullivan of Case looked over at me and did one of these numbers. So that means it's time. Thank you, John. Uh, on behalf of F&W Media, Krause Publications, Blade Magazine, and the Blade Show staff, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Blade Magazine 2013 Awards Banquet of the Blade Show and Living Ready Expo. We hope you're having a great show and continue to have a great one through tomorrow. Can you hear me okay? Before we get started, uh, Blade Magazine Cutlery Hall of Fame member B.R. Hughes will give the invocation. B.R., please, if you would. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we thank you for your countless blessings, and we ask that you would bless this assemblage of men and women from all quarters of the United States, bound together by a common love of fine knives. We ask also that you would bless the food of which we have just partaken, that it might nourish and strengthen our bodies that we might better serve you. Bless the men and women in the armed forces of the United States of America, the men and women in our police services and in our fire services who put their lines, lives on the line each day to protect and serve us. We ask that when we leave here, you would go with us, guide our words, our thoughts, and our actions. We ask all of these things in your holy name. Amen. Uh, as usual, a part of our tradition now is for uh, James West to give us one of his uh, political themed anthems here. So, I'm sorry, patriotic themed <laughs> anthems here. So, James, if you would. As the storm clouds gather Far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we lift our voices in this solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America, my home, sweet 
home. Praise God. Thank you, James. Uh, tonight's banquet would not be possible without our sponsors, AG Russell Knives, Blade HQ, CRKT, Fromars USA, and New Graham Knives. Please join me in giving them all a big round of applause. Uh, before continuing, I'd like to acknowledge the Blade Show staff. They've really done a great job this year. Uh, Alicia Newton, Ashley Sesteric, Amy Brewer, uh, Jim Schlender, Jamie Wilkinson, uh, Ben Sobiak, uh, I guess Joe too, and, uh, but they've all done a great job. Ashley really did a great job on advertising. You'll probably notice there's a lot more people in the hall, I, at least it, it seemed to me over the past two days, and I think it was largely because she did a fantastic job of putting out advertising on radio and television. So, but anyhow. Um, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, the Honorable Jen Coffey. Jen has served in the New Hampshire State Legislature, is a past winner of the Blade Magazine Publishers Award, and is also a published author and a volunteer EMT. As if she didn't do enough, we are pleased to call her one of our favorite cutlery crusaders who has taken on our cause as her own and volunteers countless hours to ensure our right to own, create, trade, and sell our tools is protected from overregulation, including helping to change the laws right here in Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Coffey. Thank you, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. The first time that I was invited to be the keynote speaker in 2010, I told many of you in this room that the Blade Show was illegal under Atlanta City Ordinance. And in 2013, the state of Georgia not only passed preemption, ending the prohibitions in Atlanta, but legalized all knives. Maybe uh, the Waverly will forgive me. I was told that after my keynote address in 2010, over 100 people questioned the staff if we were really in Atlanta. And when they found out they were, well, I don't think the Waverly was too happy with me over that many people questioning the staff. So maybe they'll forgive me now. What I didn't know then, though, and what I, what I am happy to say very happy to say now, is that I've had the privilege and the honor to get to know some of the most amazing people involved in the knife industry. You are a unique group of people, and I have thoroughly enjoyed being invited and accepted into your family. Some of the people in this room are also slightly partially to blame for my new addiction. But thankfully, I do have a forgiving husband, except for when he thinks it's his turn to buy a new tool, or a work of art, or perhaps in my case, a new accessory. My knives really do match my outfits. I will say he does seem to enjoy chatting with the guys about the latest knife or gun event that I have, quote, dragged him to. But most of the blame goes to two things the knife that bit me on the rescue call, and Evan Knappen for showing me the New Hampshire law that prohibited me from buying the tool that I wanted. It still amazes me how New Hampshire lit the spark that ignited across our great country, causing state after state to change their laws. 
And I'm very proud to say that the first national firearms organization to support our efforts in New Hampshire was the Second Amendment Sisters. It was the hard work and the dedication of New Hampshire businesses and voters that made all the difference, including one particular businessman who did something I don't recommend everyone else do. He brought to the New Hampshire State House illegal contraband. He brought a manual opener, an assisted opener, and the dreaded switchblade and then proceeded to show them how easy it was to open all three at approximately the same speed and explain to them that the difference was technology, tools with different technology. This further emphasized that laws shouldn't be on objects. Since New Hampshire, about seven states have passed preemption law. Knife Rights published a list showing that since New Hampshire started the path of liberty, 13 pro-knife bills have passed, seven states have repealed their bans, and many anti-knife bills have been defeated. We must, especially in the political times that we live in, pay close attention to our states and especially the federal government. So many still have this bizarre fear of an object, a tool, a work of art, and neglect the real dangers that are around them, the criminal elements that are among us. No law or regulation will ever rid us of crime, and demonizing our tools is the wrong course of action. This isn't the 1950s. And as my friend Jeff Knox said, the Jets and the Sharks, well, they're in their 80s now. The emphasis of law should always be on the criminal act and not the inanimate object. There are ongoing talks by many in this room, such as the American Knife and Tool Institute, who have been actively working with the TSA and the International Civil Aviation Organization to help them understand the difference between criminals and tools. I hope that all of you are paying attention and encouraging others to do the same. There must be active, thoughtful discussions, especially with your elected officials in D.C. If you are silent, then that silence is misunderstood by those officials who are elected. And they take that to mean that you agree with their restrictions on our tools. Another issue that faces the knife industry is counterfeiting. We have all seen the hard work, dedication, and imagination of our friends and family stolen and knockoffs made and sold as if they were the real thing. I am sure many people have realized too late they were the victim of fraud and their money was long gone. This issue is also being addressed by AgKey tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and many of you have received the invitation. You owe it to yourself, to your craft, to spare that brief moment and to learn and discuss effective ways of dealing with theft of your intellectual property. I worked on intellectual property laws in New Hampshire with the J.D. Salinger family, and I understand how hurtful it can be to see your hard work, blood, sweat, and tears dismissed by the actions of others who lay claim to the fruit of your labor. In the June Magazine issue of Blade Magazine, I wrote about my experience with the New Hampshire Auto Dealers Association. Many of you are business owners and know the value of a new market. There are automobile dealer associations in every single state in the United States, and most of them act as the primary purchasing agents for all of the dealers in their states the right product at the right price with XYZ Auto's logo on it, secured to a seatbelt or a visor, keeps your product out there and their logo visible. I can tell you almost every major dealership owner told me they had never thought of a seatbelt cutter and what a great tool that would be for them instead of tiny little ice scrapers or free air fresheners. 
Now, at the time, I lacked the information needed to close the deal. You know your products. You know your price points. You know what you could do with their logos. The auto industry has not met the knife industry, and that can enhance the safety of their vehicles. All of us could change that with our own efforts. Imagine just one life saved in an accident because of a tool the dealer gave instead of the ice scraper. The press as well, it's worth it. The life saved, priceless. They said we couldn't pass repeal laws, and we did. What started in New Hampshire was not an anomaly, but the quest for liberty that has spread across the country. The issue facing us at the federal level and the idea of reaching outside the box to find new pathways in business, with the auto industry, for example, are the small sparks that are needed now. What could you do to help ignite the next firestorm? Thank you. Thanks, Jen. As usual, it's fantastic. Uh, Jen does a lot for the knife industry. Uh, anytime that you, know, you have any kind of uh, questions about uh, anti-knife legislation, that kind of thing, Jen Coffey, along with uh, AKTI and your knife rights, are definitely great sources to, uh, to uh, use. So. Making our first awards presentation is Blade Magazine Managing Editor Joe Kurtzman. He will make the presentation for the Publishers Award, which goes to a person we feel personifies professionalism in the knife industry. In case you didn't know, in addition to being, or in addition to help write stories for our website, www.blademag.com, covering for all my mistakes on Blade, and editing such books as Blade's Guide to Making Knives and Art of the Knife, Joe is in his 14th year of editing the Knives Annuals, widely regarded as the Bible of the knife industry. Ladies and gen or gents, my partner in slime, Joe Kurtzman. <laughs> wow, all right. <laughs> the publisher of Blade Magazine, uh, Jim Schlender, allowed me to present the 2013 Publishers Award because uh, this year's recipient of the honor is near and dear to me. So um, the award is an easy one to give because I actually really like the recipient as a person and professional, which, well, you know, for some of you guys who I've given awards to in the past, eh, yeah, so-so. Um, <laughs> just kidding. When I first came into the knife side of the publishing business in 1996 and would attend trade and consumer shows, I'd introduce myself to company reps and ask if they had a product catalog and images for possible future use in the magazine and to familiarize myself with their product line. And it was amazing how many blank stares I got and comments like, we're lucky we got knives built in time for the show, you know, much less a catalog made up. Uh, there was one company that had this spectacular marketing rep who would first off greet me, you know, genuinely. And uh, she had a warm, sincere smile. She'd ask about me if I had a family, how they were. And uh, as I got to know her over the years, I realized she wasn't just being nice, but was nice. And uh, I liked her and would inevitably visit her company booth often. And uh, she had a catalog and images, <laughs> uh, and sometimes an entire press package uh, with knives to take to the office to photograph and use. I always sent them back um, afterwards. Over the years, I realized her sincerity started at the top, like it usually does. The company is run like a professional business, but also like a family. Each member of the team is sincere uh, in, in his or her, her motivation, attitudes, business acumen, and they are a welcoming and warm bunch. Uh, they take business seriously, but they are real nice, genuine people, and that's something to be proud of. One of the things that makes any industry go in the public relations are the public relations specialists, and they make up uh, one of those areas of expertise that no one really notices all that much unless they either do a poor job or not one at all. This year's winner of the Blade Magazine Publishers Award 
is one of those specialists who has consistently performed above and beyond the call, and she's been doing at the same company for almost 18 years now. Uh, she started in customer service and moved to the marketing department. At the time, it was a much larger department than it is today. Back then, it consisted of five people, and it was eventually reduced to uh, just our honoree, at which time she became the company's marketing manager and part of the management team. She is in charge of all the company's catalogs, most of the ads, most of the PR, and most of the relationships with writers and people in the industry. She's a rock at trade shows. Anyone who is anyone in the knife media knows her and loves her. In an age of emails and websites, she still sends personal written notes to individual media members when they write stories about her company's knives. That's right, written personal notes. Uh, it was hard enough to get PR people to do that in 1985, much less uh, 2013, but she still does it. And she often includes candy bars and beef jerky in uh, her press packets. That alone deserves accolades. Uh, the company she works for makes some of the best knives in the business and no doubt would uh, make just as good a quality knives without her, but it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same without visiting that company's booth and seeing her smiling face or emailing the company and having her return an email talking about her boxers or otherwise brightening your day with some anecdote about the latest goings on with her or at Spyderco. I could go on, but she's probably already embarrassed enough. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Publisher, uh, Publishers Award, Joyce Latouri. about a blind side. Thank you guys, it's amazing what a little bit of candy and beef jerky will do in a room full of super, <laughs> super, super nice people. And um, 18 years ago, I came to Spyderco and I was a knife fam from a family of boys. Um, most of you in this room welcome you with open arms and I just really wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Um, you are gonna make me cry, don't do it, but an amazing group of people. This industry is unlike anything else. My hat's off to every one of you. And thank you, Spider Co., for giving me a chance. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joe. Uh, presenting the Industry Achievement Award is one of the four founders of the American Bladesmith Society, a knife writer, editor, and teacher, Blade Magazine, Cutlery Hall of Fame member, B.R. Hughes. The Industry Achievement Award goes to someone who has contributed above and beyond to the knife community over a lifetime. If any one person is qualified to present such an award, it is our presenter. Ladies and gents, B.R. Hughes. Thank you, Steve. One of the amazing things about life is that many people who contribute so much seem to over, be overlooked by the vast majority, but this should not diminish in the least their achievements. The gentleman to whom I am privileged to present this award tonight is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps and he launched into a career of bladesmithing that's covered more than 50 years. Along the way, he has proven himself to be a, a, not only a master bladesmith, but a master teacher. He's written two of the best books ever written on the subject of bladesmithing. He has served the ABS as president, 
one four-year term in the past, and yesterday he launched a new term as president of the ABS. Almost single-handedly, he has revitalized the art of bladesmithing in France. Recently, he has been over and setting up to teach a class on bladesmithing in Belgium. He's revitalized the American Bladesmith Youth Program, and we have young people being taught the art of the forged blade. I could go on and on because this gentleman has achieved all sorts of things, not only in America, but across the world. And his impact will be felt for many, many years. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you tonight Mr. Joe Kiesler. get caught with something not to say, but I think this may be one of those times. Uh, I was sitting out there listening to this, this introduction. I had no idea who it was until he mentioned my name, so I got kind of caught flat, flat footed on this thing. I want to thank Blade Magazine and, and all the good things that they do, and thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Joe and I are big John Wayne fans. I don't know if y'all knew I was a John Wayne fan or not, but we both, we, do <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh, he watches a lot of John Wayne movies, I do too. He got me an autographed copy of a book written by Harry Carey Jr., who just passed away here not too long ago, but boy, it's a fantastic book. And, but anyhow, um, many great people have contributed to this wonderful industry over the years and we lost a number of them over the past year they include writer jerry ahern abs master smith red saint Cyr, phyllis goddard wife of abs master smith wayne goddard cody crawford son of knife maker wes crawford and grandson of knife maker pat crawford knife maker ted dow a founding member of the knife makers guild knife makers paul fox skip miller and steve Ficus and Wallace Beinfeld, producer of the Las Vegas Antique Arm Show and a former publisher of Blade Magazine, who passed away on May 10th. Please forgive me if I have omitted anyone. And of course, let us not forget all the unfortunate victims of the terrible storms recently, those who were killed in the Boston bombings, and the brave men and women in our armed forces who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Please join me in a moment of silence for them all. Thank you. Tonight's award presenters are good friends of the knife industry. Would those awards presenters please approach the stage and be seated behind me. Uh, now is the time many of you have been waiting for the announcement of the Blade Magazine 2013 Knife of the Year Awards. I remind all the winners of tonight's trophies to please take your award winning knives 2.7 as early as possible after the show opens in the morning. So point seven can photograph your ni or knives for use in the Blade Magazine special uh, story that will feature the knives of the years. And please get the knives there early. With the show closing at 2 p.m. tomorrow, point seven needs the knives as early as possible to get them all shot. There will be no charge to you for the pictures as point seven provides this service to us each year. Uh, our thanks to Eric Egley, Cameron Egley, and the rest of the point seven crew. For those of you who don't know, the Point Seven studio is located behind the old Blade Show office. Right there. Cool. Our first presenter is a longtime bladesmith, a huge supporter of the ABS Bladesmithing for Kids program, and a veteran Blade Show attendee. 
He is also one of the stars of National Geographic's TV show, Lords of War. His area of expertise on the TV show is anything and everything to do with knives and swords. He appraises their value, and then the blades are auctioned off at the end of the program. If the blade doesn't sell for at least as much as he appraises it, he and the rest of the show don't get their 15%. However, when it comes to those appraisals, he's pretty much nailed all of them, which is pretty much what you would expect from someone nicknamed the Hammer. That's okay, you don't have to calm down. Okay, ladies and gents, presenter, or presenting the award for the accessory of the year, Larry the Hammer Harley. Outstanding. Thank y'all. Uh, I'll do this as quick as possible so we won't have to look at me too long. Uh, the winner of the accessory of the year goes to Columbia River Knife and Tool, the Ken Onion Survival Parasol. I can, can I? Huh? I can, can I? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. This is a group effort, isn't it? Larry, you dressed up. You dressed up. There you go. Thank you, Rod. Thank you. Yeah, buddy, I hope y'all doing good. I've renamed Larry as Larry Eye Candy. <laughs> It, it's they a shirt now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he needs something pretty on the show. He's in the looks department. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, I love this place. I love what I do. It does. And uh, CRKT's been really good to me. So I don't know what else to say. Thank you. This is always a treat. Thanks very much. We appreciate it. And. Uh, um, Mr. Onion's been a great addition to our group, and this is always a fun group to get. A, this is a good industry. It's a great industry. It's not a big industry, but it's a close industry. And I'm not going to get on a soapbox tonight. Maybe I will. But you ought to show up tomorrow because it's an industry we want to protect. It's an industry that has a threat, just like every other industry. You need to be concerned about your intellectual property. You need to show up and go to that counterfeiting seminar tomorrow morning because your brand's valuable. And if you let people rip it off, well, then you let them rip it off. If you choose to stand up and fight it, then good for you. So show up, learn a little, and thanks very much. for This is a great honor. We appreciate it. Even a blind squirrel every once in a while, right, Ken? <laughs> Our next presenter has worked for A.G. and Goldie Russell of A.G. Russell Knives in Rogers, Arkansas for 15 years. She is the company special projects manager, buyer for Russell's for Men, and brand new women's prerogative catalogs. I like that name, women's prerogative. And is the show manager for the annual A.G. Russell Knife event. She is also rumored to be the biggest Arkansas Razorback fan in history. And her suey pig call has been ranked number one in the state five years running by the official Razorback publication Oink Oink Quarterly. <laughs> Ladies and gents, here to present the Kitchen Knife of the Year, Debbie the Jammer Myers. Thank you, thank you, good evening. Can you hear me? Because I'm going to take a minute. When Steve asked me to be a presenter, I said, of course, I'll do anything. As long as I can do the overall knife of the year. Got it. Yes. And I wanted a comfortable chair to sit in. I've been standing all day. We'll get you one. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, 
thanks for the one thing. I didn't ask for a throne. I just asked for a wing back chair. That's all I wanted. Okay. And I didn't know that Mr. Hammer was going to wear a tuxedo or I would have worn an evening Chris dress or something. Just a little bit, huh? Yes. Yes. Um, no, uh, I, I asked him, can we, can we just make it a little fun? Can, we do some, can I do something fun? And he said, well, sure, of course. But no singing, no tap dancing, no baton twirling, no cheerleading, no plate swirling, no uh, juggling chainsaws, no knife throwing, of all things, uh, and uh, no shameless promotion of A.G. Russell product. Uh, I also have to, uh, oh, I can't uh, call one of these things a Stevie, can't do that either, which I thought was cute. Uh, and I have to be CC at all times. Yes. CC means collegiately correct. And since you brought the Razorback thing up for the first time, I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, for all of you fans of the Gators and the Bulldogs and the Gamecocks and the Tigers and the, uh, no, we're not getting there yet, and the um, Aggies and the Rebels and the Volunteers and the Elephants. Yes, Robin, yes. Uh, oh, and uh, I don't have I left anybody out. Uh, oh, yeah, you're in SEC country, honey. Yes, yes, that's right. But at any rate, for all of, so as not to offend anyone, I am going to refrain from calling the hogs. So I will not do it. No, that's okay. He made me sign a prenup. So, um, so one of the things. Uh, what? Well, we'll just get right down to business. Oh, I talk too much. I'm sorry, y'all. It's kitchen. Oh, okay. And I have a funny story. I had to run to the bathroom real quick, and I took the envelopes with me because he gave them to me beforehand, which really wasn't smart. And I left the kitchen one in the bathroom, and I had to run back. And then when, as I was running out, I ran into less. And anyway, it's a funny story. But um, on with the show. So the, uh, the kitchen knife of the year, and I don't see that there's a letter opener up here, but no problem. Whoops. I'll try that again because I've been practicing really hard. A.G. Russell Scorpion, booth 96. Yes. At any rate, the Kitchen Knife of the Year, the 2013 Blade Show Award, goes to... Oh, and another thing he said, I have to say what's on the paper, okay? I, I can't make up anything else. I'm nervous. I didn't realize I'd be this nervous in front of everybody. The winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Kitchen Knife of the Year is Ken Onion, Chef Works. And this is for the new rain li line. And how ironic it was less that I physically ran smack into when we were... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm working with these guys now. <laughs> so, uh, it's so cool to be able to be back in a kitchen knife again. I uh, want to thank Les. I want to thank Brian and Dennis. Um, I'm having a blast. Thanks. Thank you. I, I just want to say thank you to Blade Magazine for putting on another wonderful show. Been in the, this industry for a long time, and I really appreciate this award. Thanks to Ken's genius of design, uh, Dennis Epstein, my colleague, and the way he cajoled and hammered everybody to get things done. And then Brian from Lampson and Goodenauer, who has made a fantastic product. Thank you all for being a wonderful team. I echo everything that everybody said about this industry. You're a fantastic bunch. I'm really glad to be back in it. Thank you very much.
It's really nice to be back. Ten years ago, I was given the opportunity to be the custodian for Shun, and I thank Jack Igarashi very much for that opportunity. He brought me into this world, and I got to find a home that I really love. And then seven months ago, Ken brought me back, and uh, he brought me into his shop. He sat me down. He says, I love you like a brother, and I got your back. And I want everybody to know, Ken, I love you. You are, you are my brother, and I will always have your back. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's good to be back. Presenting the Blade Magazine 2013 Investor Collector Night for the Year is Blade Magazine ad sales guru, Lori Hallman. Lori has been with Blade over a year now and is quickly winning friends over in the knife industry. She is also fitting in nicely in the bustling one traffic light burg of Iola, Wisconsin, where somehow she has managed to continue working in the same building as Joe Kurtzman without slapping him at least once a week. Ladies and gents, presenting the award for the Investor Collector Knife of the Year, Lori Hallman. Well, I'm not going to stand up here and talk as long as Debbie did, so I'm going to present the award. And the winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Investor Collector Knife of the Year is ProTech for the Newport. Well, we're at ProTech fairly new to these wonderful pieces of acrylic, but uh, we, we do appreciate them very much. Uh, I'm honored and thrilled to be up here receiving this. Uh, thanks to the Blade Magazine staff, and uh, just a quick thank you to my father, Alan, who taught me uh, a love for entrepreneurship and a love for the knife business that I'll always have, and it's created a a work for me that I enjoy. I love what I do, and I love this industry. Thank you very much. Well said, Dave. For those of you who do not know, that was Dave Wattenberg of ProTech. Presenting the award for the collaboration of the year is Larry the Hammer Harley. Again, I'll make this real quick, because y'all don't want to look at me all that long, I can tell. My wife loves me, though. All right, winner of the Blade Magazine Knife Cooperation of the Year is Microtech and Mick Strider. Hey guys, uh, Hank Greenberg with Microtech Knives. Uh, it's an honor and a half to be up here and sharing this, you know, great night with everybody. Um, you know, it, being, being an enthusiast and now uh, an employee with Microtech Knives, uh, being, being friends with Mick Strider, being friends with Tony Marfione, uh, it, it's, it was just amazing putting the two together and uh, seeing, seeing when the best projects happen and. Uh, I don't know why I'm so nervous up here, but but I appreciate I appreciate everything. Uh, we we love you guys, and uh, you know let's just keep the industry strong and keep working together. I'd like to thank the Blade Magazine, uh, everybody here. Uh, you know, we uh, just especially like to thank uh, Mick and Marissa Strider for giving us an opportunity to work with them. 
on this new project, the Microtech staff. I'd like to especially thank uh, David Reeser for uh, really getting us uh, squared away on our uh, you know, engineering and production on this knife and bringing it to fruition. But I thank my staff, my son. It's been a good run and a lot of fun. Thank you. Presenting the uh, award for the best buy of the year is the indoctrination of the new Miss Hammer Jr. Has everyone seen his show? Everyone's seen his show. It's really, it's really great. And I hear that there are reality show scouts in the house. So that's right. That's right. I've got crazy friends. I have. I have a storyline or two, so the, the funny thing about this one is Steve brought this sledgehammer for me, and he didn't say I couldn't do sledgehammer tricks. The only problem is he brought me one that this thing up here comes off, so I've got to be, he says, be careful with it. So for the people sitting out in the front, you need to be careful. <laughs> Okay, Best Buy of the year. I'll get it, I'll get it. The winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Best Buy of the year is Columbia River for the endorser. Thank you, everybody. This is a great uh, collaboration uh, with Matthew Lurch. Uh, we worked with him. You know, all this, all this means a lot. The, the award, the, the sales we'll get from this, everything's great. But, you know, the greatest part is the, the team we have at CRKT. It's not, I don't call them a team. They're, they're friends. And for all of you who we kept awake last night by our laughter, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we had such a good time. It was it, it's a good team. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. <sighs> Presenting the award for manufacturing quality is Lori Hammond. The winner of the Blade Magazine's 2013 Manufacturing Quality Award is Chris Reeve Knives for the company's entire line. so many times, so uh, we'll keep this short. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, blow hard. <laughs> <sighs> you 
Each year we recognize a person that sitting Hall of Fame members vote into the Blade Magazine Cutlery Hall of Fame. Instead of reading them all off, we have a plaque at the entrance to the banquet hall right up there that lists the name of, names of all the current members. Meanwhile, there are some Hall of Fame members in attendance tonight. If you are a member, please stand and so I can introduce you to our audience. Ken Onion, B.R. Hughes, and A.G. Russell. I like being around legends. And now for this year's inductee into the Blade Magazine Cutlery Hall of Fame. I am humbled and honored that this year's inductee asked me to officially induct him. He has been a knife maker since 1963, which makes this his 50th anniversary of knife making. He's also the 50th inductee into the Cutlery Hall of Fame. This is also Blade Magazine's 40th anniversary. I guess you could say that is a numeric convergence of sorts. As his fellow Cutlery Hall of Famers wrote, the inductee is the Dean of American Northwest Bladesmiths. He has been a leader and an example to generations of knife makers. He was a knife maker when that meant one of a few, when tools were only basic and it was all in the hands. According to our inductee, I consider myself fortunate to have started in, or to have started in the dark ages of knife making. Those of us who were getting started in those early years used whatever we had and made the most of it. We had to be inventive problem solvers or else we wouldn't have gotten too far. I believe that if you can't learn to do something with simple tools, then all the fancy tools will not do much good. An example of this was his first knife. He made it from, a, from scratch out of a lathe rasp he had drawn the hardness back on. As he said, our old Westinghouse washing machine wore out, but the motor was good, so I made my first grinder out of it. It was a real piece of work. The grinding wheel and adapter came from Sears, and the switch came from a secondhand store. An old cookie sheet was bent up and around to make a guard, and the whole mess was bolted down to an old bookcase. It was underpowered and ran too slow, but it did work well enough to grind out my first 20 knives. Our inductee went on to make a number of award-winning custom knives and also design knives for Spyderco. In fact, I believe he has it. They have a new one out by him now. Or it might be a, a reintroduction, I'm not sure. But he has held membership in the Knife Makers Guild and is a master smith in the ABS. He has taught forging, sharpening, and other knife-related subjects at a variety of venues. His columns for Blade have included his question and answer for over 20 years and also columns on Blade Steels, the $50 knife shop, and other features. He also has written for the Knives Annual. Among others, his books include the $50 knife shop, The Wonder of Knife Making, and Wired Damascus Hunting Knife, How to Do It. His writings on the importance of testing, forging, and how the proper heat treating of a steel can be as important, if not more important, than the steel itself have helped shed life on these three often misunderstood subjects. Perhaps therein lies the key to our inductee's true genius. He was the product of an era when knife makers guarded most of their methods like the Holy Grail, as if those methods were their secrets and their secrets alone. He was at the forefront of those who gave freely of those so-called secrets in the pages of Blade long before the internet made it fashionable to do so. And when the internet came along, he embraced it and spread his knife making gospel online to budding knife makers everywhere. The past year or so has been a trying one for him. He lost his wife and his inspiration, Phyllis, and health issues have precluded him from attending tonight. But he is here in spirit and remains in the thoughts of blade readers and knife enthusiasts everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 inductee into the Blade Magazine Cutlery Hall of Fame, Wayne Goddard. As I mentioned, Wayne is unable to attend tonight, but he asked me to read the following on his behalf. I regret that health issues have kept me from being here. I've asked my hardworking editor to accept the award for me and pass on a few words. I want to thank members of the Cutlery Hall of Fame for this honor. 
It will help me celebrate 50 years as a knife maker. It has given me great joy to have filled the role of knife maker, writer, and teacher. I have a lot to be thankful for. I visited Rudy Ruana in 1969, and it was quite inspiring to see a knife maker turning out knives by the handful. He gladly answered all the dumb quest beginner questions I had, and that was a big help. In 1971, I got acquainted with Bob Loveless, who was helping get the Knife Makers Guild organized. I joined as an associate member and was at the 1972 meeting and show in Kansas City. There was one maker who wanted to keep me from getting a probationary membership because my catalog was not professional enough to suit him. First on his feet was Bill Moran to argue that the guild shouldn't monitor catalogs. The majority agreed with him and he became my hero. When the guild voted on the rules, there was nothing about the quality of a maker's catalog. I was accepted and got my voting membership in 1975. Bob Loveless was mostly misunderstood. He always took time to help new makers like myself and was free and open with information. Don't think for a minute that I was an exception. He probably got more makers started than anyone. He was a good example and I was fond of passing it on when it came time to share. My wife of 53 years, Phyllis, lost her fight with cancer in September. She was my partner in all we did and I couldn't have achieved all that I've done without her. I wish he could be here to share the occasion. That's, that's the end of Wayne's letter. I might add that all of us who know Wayne and knew Phyllis wish they could be here too. But as I mentioned earlier, they are here in spirit. And it is that spirit that helps make the Blade Show the world's best knife show. Thank you. Here's the hall of, here is the Hall of Fame plaque, by the way. So. <laughs> Presenting the award for the most innovative imported design is Larry Harley. Thank you, Steve. Uh, the most innovative imported knife design of the year Notice how quick I just roll right through this. Is uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool. Ken Onion Swindle. Ken, I'm just gonna put a chair up here, okay? feel embarrassed about this. Thank you so much. Thanks, CRKT. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> this is awesome. Thanks. Rod, take over. Save me. <laughs> I don't say. Hey, uh, uh, you know what? One of the things that I really liked about Mr. Flagg's comments earlier was that he referred to our group as friends. And uh, we really do have a very nice group of people that we work with. And um, yeah, maybe we keep some folks up on the third floor at the Embassy Suites. Deal with it. <laughs> we work together, we work hard together, we laugh, we socialize, it's good stuff. Blade Magazine, thanks for an awesome show, and uh, this is a real honor. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Yes, we are going to rename the stage this Ken Onion CRKT Memorial Stage. <laughs> I remember one year, what was it, when y'all started out with the kiss, Rod, y'all kept up all of Las Vegas that night, I think, if you'll remember. Okay. Uh, okay, we got that one. Page seven. Have we already done collaboration? Yes. Who was that? <laughs> You're just giving them away now. 
down boy. Who is that guy? Um, presenting the award for most innovative American design is Miss Hammer Jr. She just corrected me. It's, since she's not dressed up anymore, it's, it's Debbie Myers. It's Debbie Myers. Thank you. Uh, I will say one thing. I was just talking with Mr. Hammer, and he did inform me that he hunts wild razorbacks with his bare hands and a knife, which you're going to have to cut that out. <laughs> Every time I kill one, I put a big T on the side. <laughs> T for Texas, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. The winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Most Innovative American Design of the Year is Microtech for the DOC Kill Switch. Thank you. Um, we worked really hard this past year. Um, again, like my dad said earlier, uh, working with the, the Strider crew and stuff like that on this DOC has uh, been a real fun project. Um, the rotary safety was a brilliant idea by my dad. Um, simple yet elegant. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I just hope my son just allows me at least like uh, more than one week next time to uh, come up with a new fresh design idea. <laughs> it was extremely difficult and I thank my son Sean because we just worked 15, 16 hour days and again I thank Dave Reeser and his staff to help us pull that through and Mick and uh, Marissa to allow us because the, the DOC collaboration or at least the collaboration with uh, Mick is, uh, is a four part series which does include the kill switch the flipper and we have a couple more on its way as well. So we're just having a good time and we thank every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. This shit stage is kind of sh or shaky, wobbly, and I've got to lose some weight. It's not Larry. Uh, presenting the Blade Magazine 2013 Imported Knife of the Year is Lori Hahn. The winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Imported Knife of the Year is Fox Knives for the oh. No Every year we come up here and accept something when we do, I normally say something, but I don't want to say too much because Gabby has to say something now. I can't come up here and accept stuff for the, the creativity and all the work that they've put behind what they do from uh, Maniago, Italy. You so. said everything. Uh, no, 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 no. Get on there. <laughs> You Thank go. you so much from Maniago, from the small town of Italy. We came here in this big country and thank you America. Thank you for the knife industry. Thank you for much for voting us. Thank you. got to quit meeting like this, Mikey. The first hug I ever gave you, I don't even know how to do it. That's not what I've heard. <laughs> Presenting the award of the American Made Knife of the Year is Larry Harley. Oh, this is one of the biggies right here. Everybody hold your breath. I, I read this, but I forgot who it was. And the winner is Hogalishowitz, the EX04. Evidently, uh, well, that hurt my feelings. 
Apparently they're not here. We'll give them their award in the, in the morning. But uh, congratulations to Hoga Lishowitz. Uh, and making our final presentation for over, not overall night of the year is Debbie Myers. I'm the jammer. The winner of the Blade Magazine 2013 Overall Knife of the Year is Zero Tolerance Model 0454. Good evening. Thank you very much for this great recognition. I'm ahead of the team ZT, Kasho, and Shun. And uh, Dennis Epstein, welcome back to the industry. So, well, uh, you know, the, uh, our special uh, team ZT is assembled just ordinary people. However, as a head of the team, I recognize my team's core competence is creativity and passion of pursuing innovation. And, uh, you know, the uh, um, head of sales and marketing, ZT team, Thomas, please stand up. He worked very hard to introduce the, you know, this product, new product. In the meantime, also a head of the manufacturing, Craig Green, please stand up. Um, to be honest, I did nothing. They did. So uh, definitely they are eligible and team sitting there. So please join me you know, uploading in their excellent efforts. Team, thank you very much. And I believe we raise bar every year. I believe this kind of passion you know, contribute to industry. As our, you know, friendly competition, CRKT, he said, you know, Lord, he said, our industry, it isn't so large. However, you know, have to protect, you know, the, by cooperating each other. So we don't stop to raise a bar, you know, every year. In the meantime, tonight is our just commencement. For next year, we make the every endeavor to come back this position. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Uh, please let me remind all the winners of tonight's Knife of the Year Awards to be sure to take your knife to point seven first thing in the morning to have it photographed for the story on the awards in Blade Magazine. Thank you for coming and good night.